Or if you turn to Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah chapter 7, we'll start in verse 1. It says, And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramaya, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim, and his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, as the trees of the wood, are moved with the wind. Then said Jehovah unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and Shirashab, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field, and say unto him, Take heed and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted for the, the two tails of this smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rezin with Syria and of the son of Romalia, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Romalia have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabail. Thus saith Adonai Jehovah, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass, for the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin, and within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Ramallah's son. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Yeshua Jehovah, we just come to you this afternoon, and I pray, Yeshua, for your Holy Spirit. I pray, Yeshua, you bless this message. I pray, Yeshua, we stand in faith, even though others, even within their own families, do not stand and do not believe Thee and have never come to repentance, Yeshua. But I pray you be with your people, those faithful saints that continue in these days, Yeshua, and we shine forth the gospel, the truth to all nations, I pray. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. I pray you show Jehovah in that precious name. So be it. So here in Isaiah chapter 7, in verse 1, it talks about, In the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. Here is even... Parts of Israel where that that used to be part of one house, they went against the house of David or the tribe of Judah to war against it. And it was told the house of David in verse 2 saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. Ephraim made up of the of the ten tribes that were that, that divided from Israel with, with Judah and Benjamin that remained. Ephraim was to the north, and they, they were lying with Syria to attack Judah, to vex it. And then God's word came to Isaiah. He met the king, Ahaz, and he told him, he told him to, to, uh, to stand with him. And, it, and, and he says in verse 7, Thus saith Adonai Jehovah, it shall not stand their counsel of, of going up against it to war. It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. And then he says something, in verses 8 and 9, it says, For the head of Syria is Damascus. All right, that's the capital of Syria. And the head of Damascus is Rezin, which is the king of Syria. And he says, Within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that is not that it be not a people. Ephraim was, was the, the king there in Ephraim. Pekah, the son of Ramiah, king of Israel, was of the tribe of Ephraim. Within 65 years... They are not, they're not a people. God cut them off for their wickedness. In verse 9 it says, And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Ramallah's son. Then he says, If you will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. In the beginning there was one house and one family, one nation, the children of Jacob. He had 12 sons. This, there was one nation and one family and one house. The children of Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So it used to be called only the house of Israel. It was never called by other names like the house of Judah or the house of David and the house of Israel and the house of Jacob. It was only but the house of Israel, only one house. But there was a split. The ten tribes, including Ephraim, they, they split up with Judah and Benjamin. But the Levites remained with Judah and Benjamin in the temple to, to, to work in the temple to 
in the tabernacle, in the temple. Turn to book of Ruth, chapter 2. Ruth, chapter 2, after the book of Judges, is the book of Ruth. So if we turn to Ruth, chapter 2, and we'll start in verse 11 and get some background and some things that are, are said in, in the book of Ruth that are prophetic. Read, starting verse 11, it says, And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother in the, all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother. Remember that. It's talking about, Boaz is talking about, about Ruth. All right, Ruth was a Moabitess. All right, and she married. She 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 married within the tribe of Israel. And Boaz answered in verse eleven, said unto her, "It hath been fully showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother. Remember that she left her father and mother. She left her own house. All right, and she's going to be joined to a new house." She's a stranger in Israel, and her lineage, Boaz and Ruth, through her lineage came the house of David. King David's line came through Ruth and Boaz. She left her father and mother, just remember that, and the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore. And then verse 12, this is what Boaz says. He says, Jehovah recompense thy work. And a full reward be given thee of Jehovah Elohim of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Boaz says, Jehovah recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee. What was her work? It's a work of faith, as we're going to keep reading. Verse 13, Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast Comforted me, and for thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I, had, though I be not like unto one of thy handmaids. In other words, she's a stranger, but, she, but Boaz still married her, all right? In verse, and go to turn to Ruth chapter 4 now. Ruth chapter 4, in verse 9. Here Boaz redeems redeems the inheritance all right of Ruth's husband and 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 her brother and uh and not her brother but her husband's brother in Ruth chapter 4 verse 9 it says and Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was at Elam and that I have bought all what that was a lie mix and all that was Chilhans and Mehalans of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, so she wasn't, she wasn't of the seed of Israel, she wasn't of Jacob. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Mahlon, have I purchased to be my wife to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his place. Ye are witnesses this day. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. Jehovah, make the woman that has come into thine house. All right. We're talking about the house. And we're going to talk about the house of faith, the household of faith and the household of Israel. And how we're joined unto the house of Israel through faith. He, they, the people answered and said, We are witnesses that Jehovah make the Make the woman that is come into thine house like Rachel and like Leah, which two did build the house of Israel. So from Jacob's wives, Rachel and Leah came all the house of Israel. And do thou worthily in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem and let thy house be like the house of Pharaoh, whom Tamar bare unto Judah of the seed which Jehovah shall give of this young woman. So Boaz is of Judah, 
his son, uh, Judah, Judah had a son named Perez through Tamar, all right? Tamar bore Perez unto Judah, if you, in, 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 I believe in Chronicles and, and even in New Testament, it talks about how you can find the, the lineage from Judah through Perez. You can find it down to Boaz. Boaz marries Ruth, a Moabitess, and it goes down to the to Jesse, the father of David, and, and finally to King David himself. All right, and you can trace it down to when Yeshua was born. All right. So they say something interesting here. They say, Jehovah make the woman that is coming to thine house like Rachel and like Leah, which two did build the house of Israel. All the tribes, the twelve tribes, came from Rachel and Leah, the house of Israel. There was one house originally, one house, one house that Jacob was the father. His name was changed to Israel. And he taught his children to worship and follow Yeshua, Jehovah. All right. He got saved and he preached to his children. He taught his children the ways of Jehovah. Jacob was the son of Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham. Which the New Testament says, which is the father of us all through faith. What was the full reward of, of Ruth? The full reward of her, it was of her faith of what she did or what, what, how she went to Boaz and how she, she, she was basically following the ways of Jehovah and she, she joined into the house of Boaz, to the house of Israel. Going back, there was a time when all of Israel was one house. There, it was one nation, one faith, one house. In the time of Joshua, when all the tribes were of one faith, they were one faith serving Jehovah. They had faith with works and they were doing what was right in the eyes of Jehovah. And there, was, there were other times when there were divisions because of apostasy and, and wickedness of either an individual or a tribe or even the, as, as the whole house committed. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 7. First Samuel chapter seven, and we'll start in verse. We'll start in verse one. It says, "And the men of Kirjath Jarim came and brought up the ark of Jehovah, and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill, and sanctified Eliezer the son to keep the ark of Jehovah." So before the ark rested in its final resting place, which was in Jerusalem on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite, whom King David bought, all right, and that was where the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant, was laid upon the stone. The, thresh, the threshing floor was a stone. The judgment seat, the, 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 the mercy seat upon the ark was set upon the stone. And I preach upon the why always... When there's a, there's a judgment seat, the judgment seat is, is, is placed upon a stone. Before that time, the, the, the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah was brought into individuals' houses. And during this time, it was in the house of someone named Abinadab in the hill. And what happened? And, and it says, and they, they sanctified Eliezer his son to keep the Ark of Jehovah. Eliezer was the high priest. And it came to pass while the Ark abode in Kirjit Jarim, that the time was long, for it was 20 years, and all the house of Israel lamented after Jehovah. All right? All the house. In verse 3 it says, And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye, will, if, if ye do return unto Jehovah with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtoreth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto Jehovah, and serve Him only, and he will deliver you out of the out, out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtoreth and serve Jehovah only. And Samuel said, "Gather all Israel to Mizpah, which is which means the camp, and I will pray for you. And I will pray for you unto Jehovah." And they gathered together to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before Jehovah. 
and fasted on that day and said, We have sinned against Jehovah, and Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. All right? And they were delivered from the hands of the Philistines. So the house of Israel, when they departed and they sinned and they broke the covenant, they repented. And here in verse 3, Samuel says, And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto Jehovah with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtoreth from among you and prepare your hearts unto Jehovah and serve him only and he will deliver you out of their hands. He'll save you. Only when you serve and you, you repent and serve Jehovah with all your heart. Just like how we read in Isaiah 7 verse 9. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. It's not just faith. It's faith with works. It was not just that they named Jehovah with their mouth, yet in their, but with their works, but by works they were worshiping strange gods and Ashtaroth, which was a false god where you get all, all the hosts of heaven, all the fallen angels, they're, they're worshiping devils basically. They, they were only a house of faith by name only until they put away and they truly returned to Jehovah with all their hearts. So when Samuel spake to them, he tested them. Only if you do return unto Jehovah with all your hearts, then, then will come salvation. Then you'll get the full reward of faith. So after that time, there are other times they, they returned to Yeshua, Jehovah. Then they left. They came back and they, were, they, they, they repented. They turned back with all their heart and Jehovah delivered them. This went over and over in cycles. And then it says, during the times of Samuel, there was deliverance, but they didn't continue in the faith. They didn't continue that long in the faith. They went so many years, and then they went away again. Turn to book of Micah chapter 2. Prophet Micah chapter 2. We'll start in verse 1. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it, because it is in the power of their hand. And they covet fields and take them by violence, and houses and, they, and take them away. What, what do these people do? What, is, what do these wicked people do? Micah is sent to the children of Israel, right? He's sent during the time to... During Hezekiah, Ahaz, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. He was, he was a prophet sent during that time. And then he says in verse 3, Therefore thus saith Jehovah, Behold, against this family do I devise an evil. So this is the word of Jehovah. He's going to bring judgment upon this family or that house. He says, Upon, Behold, against this family do I devise evil. Devise an evil from which ye shall not remove your necks. Neither shall ye go haughtily for this time is evil. And that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation and say, We be utterly spoiled. He hath changed the portion of my people. How hath he removed it from me? Turning away, he hath divided our fields. Therefore thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord by lot in the congregation of Jehovah. Prophesy ye not, say they to them that prophesy. They shall not prophesy to them that they shall, and they shall not take shame. In other words, he's going to cut off the prophet from preaching to them anymore because he's through with them. He's done with that family. And during this time of Micah, there, the judgment was pronounced. In Micah chapter 2 verse 7, O thou that art named the house of Jacob, is the spirit of Jehovah straightened? All right, he says, you guys, are, you guys are named the house of Jacob or the house of Israel. Is the spirit, the Holy Spirit of Jehovah straightened? Is it, it, it? And then he says, are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? In other words, Go back to Isaiah chapter 7. The house of Ephraim with Syria 
The king of Syria, Rezin the king of Syria, went and attacked the house of David. Why? It, they've devised in their hearts to, to take away their land and to vex it. And they wanted to set their own puppet king over the tribe of Judah. From the time of Isaiah to the time of Micah, this is what they're doing. And God's going to judge them. He says in Micah chapter 2, verse 7, O thou that art named the house of Jacob, only in name, by you say you're 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 saved, you say you're a Christian, but you don't have works. Faith without works is dead. O thou that art named the house of Jacob, is the spirit of Jehovah straightened? Are these his doings? Are these his works? Does God is his works for you to covet fields and to take them by violence and to oppress a man and his house, a man and his heritage? Did God is this is this is this the, is this the faith of Yeshua Jehovah? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? If you will not believe, surely you will not be established. It's not just if you will not believe. If you will not obey and do the works, you're not going to be established. I don't care what you say. If you have not works, God's not going to bless you. If you don't tithe the tenth of all, you're cursed. You're under a curse. God's already cursed you. You're going to lose not just the tithe that you didn't pay. You're going to lose another 10%. You're going to lose 20% of all your income because you refuse to believe, to believe God's words. When God says tithe, and Abraham tithed. This was before the law of Moses. So don't say tithing is of Moses. It's of the righteousness of faith. If God gives you all, all, all your income, how do you honor God with your substance if you keep it all and you spend it all to yourself? And you don't think about the orphans, the widows, and the fatherless. And you don't do good unto those, unto the poor among you. Faith with works. In the New Testament, it's written over and over. To maintain good works. How, how, how are you going to receive the blessings? How are you going to be established? If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. Back to Micah chapter 2, verse 7. O thou that art named the house of Jacob, is the spirit of Jehovah straightened? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? Even of late my people is risen up as an enemy. Ye pull off the robe with, with the garment from them that pass by see, securely as men averse from war. The women of my people have ye cast out from their pleasant houses. From their children have ye taken away my glory forever. A, they're, they're stealing children. They're right here you have it. They're, they're pedophiles. What kind of a nation do we have in America today? Pedophiles. What do they do? They rape. They steal away. Garments from them that pass by securely. What kind of a people is this? It's called the wicked. It's called the wicked, the children of Satan. Then it says in verse 10, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. You're not going to have peace. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. What will God do to a people and a house and a nation like this? God will sorely or severely destroy it. He'll bring it to destruction. Remember this, these verses. Verse 11. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I'll prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be a prophet of this people. Right? Verse 12. I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as the flock in the midst of their fold. They shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. The breakers come up before them. They have broken up and they have passed through the gate and are gone out by it. And their king shall pass before them and Jehovah on the head of them. God's going to bring judgment upon them, upon their heads. Turn the book of Micah. Chapter 4. There is no rest to them because they kept not the righteousness which is of faith. And the righteousness of a faith is with faith with works of righteousness. 
As the scripture says, they do always err in their hearts. That is not God's house. That is not God's people. But the true people of the saints and the household of God are those that obey the gospel and obey and keep his commandments and his laws. Turn to Micah chapter 4. Micah chapter, Micah chapter 4, verse 1. It says, But in the last days it shall come to pass, that the mountain of the house of Jehovah, what house are we? What, what is the one house of one faith, one Lord, one baptism? It's His house, our Heavenly Father's house. What did Yeshua say? In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there ye may be also. Micah chapter 4, verse 1, But in the last days it shall come to pass, that the mountain of the house of Jehovah shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into, into, uh, onto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of Jehovah, and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. Your works we will walk and do. Works will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of Jehovah from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords in the plowshares and their spears in the pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any, any more. But they shall sit every man under his vine and, every, and, uh, and under his fig tree. And none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of Jehovah to both has spoken it. Right? God says He's going to establish His house upon the top of the mountains. To many nations will be gathered to it. The strangers of the house of Israel who are gone up by faith are joined to, the, to Christ Yeshua by covenant through His blood, His one sacrifice for all time. The Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Turn to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 10. We've read these verses recently. We're going to read it again. Matthew chapter 10. When Yeshua sends out the disciples to go preach the gospel. He says in verse, verse 1. And we had called unto him his twelve disciples. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. And to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. So even within one house, you have two disciples, all right? Peter and Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. You have another house with James and John. Within the house, they're, they're the first ones who believe in Christ. Verse 3, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Labaius, whose surname was Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Yeshua sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What did Yeshua come to do? He came to save his own house, the house of Israel. And as he go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor scrip nor, uh, nor brass in your purses, nor scrip for your journey. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staff for the workman is worthy of his meat. And then he says, into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And listen to what he says in verse 12. And when ye come, and when ye come into an house, salute it. Yeshua is sending the gospel from nation to nation. He's starting with the lost sheep of the house of Israel, with the nation of Israel first. And then he's, he's saying, when you go into a city or town, in verse 12, and when you come into an house, the gospel goes from a nation to a house. And then from a house, it goes to the individuals in the house. It says, and when you come into a house, salute it. 
And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. There will be no peace upon any house unless you repent and believe the gospel and, and do, do the works worthy of repentance and, and, and keep the law and the commandments. His law of faith, the righteousness of faith, both the letter and of the Spirit. Isaiah 7, verse, end of verse 9, we, we began, we read, If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. Your house will not be established without true faith, without true repentance. And here he talks about, and if the house be worthy, worthy, and if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. In verse 13 of Matthew 10. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. God will not bless the house of the wicked. God will not bless the house of the unrepentant. And whosoever shall not receive you individually, whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. God's going to bring judgment. That's why the gospel goes from nation to nation, from house to house, from person to person. The gospel is preached. And woe unto them that reject the gospel. For as Yeshua says, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Yeshua says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He sends them into cities and into the houses. Then turn to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. And we'll start in verse 21. It says, Then Yeshua went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. So he's outside the boundaries of Israel. He's in the coast of Tyre and Sidon, which is modern day Lebanon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy upon on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Remember, Ruth was a Moabitess. Here you have a Canaanite woman. All right, pleading, pleading to Yeshua, God Almighty, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. She knows, she knows Yeshua is of, of David, of the house of Boaz and Ruth. Have mercy, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeshua says, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came unto his own, the scripture says, but his own received them not. But as to as many of them who received Christ, to them gave he to become the sons of God, becomes the children of God. Verse 25, Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Yeshua answered and said unto her, Listen to what Christ says unto this Canaanite woman. Then Yeshua answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And Yeshua departed from thence and came near to the Sea of Galilee and went into a mountain and sat down there. Yeshua told that Canaanite woman, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee as thou wilt. It wasn't just her faith, it was what with her works. It was with her action, her persistence, with her faith. She begged, begged Christ, she said, Truth, Lord, Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their masters' table. In other words, though I'm not of the, your house of Israel, whom you said, I've not come, I've not, 
I have not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She had faith saying, but, if I'm, but even the dogs who are outside, not of the house, even they eat of the crumbs. And even, even that Christ showed that salvation also will come to all those who repent and believe on Him. In turn to Hebrews chapter 8. The gospel is preached. To the house of Israel first. And also to all nations. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1. It says now of the things which we have spoken. This is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand. Of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. A minister of the sanctuary. And and of the true tabernacle which Jehovah pitched and not man. What is the sanctuary? What is the true tabernacle? That is his house. He, he the true house made without hands in heavenly Jerusalem, Mount Zion in heaven. Heavenly Zion. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Therefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Remember that verses when the ark of the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant was in the tabernacle. It was in remaining in people's house. Whose house are we, it says in the book of Hebrews, if we continue in the faith? Steadfast. I believe that's Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Yeshua, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. Moses was the leader of his house. He was faithful. He gave, he received the law in Mount Sinai 40 days. In 40 nights he was up in Mount Sinai to receive the lively oracles or the living word of God from God himself written on tables of stone to teach the house of Israel, because Moses was the first leader of the house of Israel. He called Israel or Jacob out of Egypt, and he took him to the desert, to Mount Sinai, to receive the law. All right? All of this is part of the gospel. Just like Hebrews 12, which we've not come to Mount Sinai, that burning quake, but we've come to Mount Zion, heavenly Jerusalem to innumerable company of angels, to the souls of just men made perfect, and to Christ Yeshua, the mediator of the new covenant. So here in Hebrews chapter 3, it says, Moses who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in, in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch as he who builded the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we? We're part of his house. Whose house are we? Because we're made as living stones. We're built a spiritual house made without hands, to offer up spiritual sacrifices unto God. Go read First or Second Peter. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope unto the end. How are we established? Remember we began in Isaiah chapter 7. End of Isaiah 7, verse, end of Verse 9, Isaiah 7. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. If you will not believe, faith with works is dead being alone. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if, all throughout scripture you have the word if, if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope, Firm unto the end. 
so that you're established in Christ. You remain, abide in His house. Remember the, remember the parable of the prodigal son. The one son remained and the other went out. And when the prodigal son came back, there was a sacrifice, there was a dinner, a feast for the son, and there was great joy. And salvation came to that prodigal son who returned back to the house. Hebrews chapter 8, we'll continue reading. Hebrews 8 verse 3. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of ne- ne- therefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed thee, on the mount, but now he hath obtained a more excellent ministry. Yeshua has obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith Jehovah, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of of Judah. He's saying the new covenant. And in the new covenant. The house of Israel and the house of Judah. They're in the one covenant. They're in the one house. Verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. In the day when I took them by the, by the hand. To lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant. And I regarded them not. They weren't established in that covenant. They never fulfilled that covenant. And God says, I regarded them not, saith Jehovah. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Jehovah. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Jehovah. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. The new covenant he makes with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And this is an everlasting covenant which shall never, ever end. Turn to book of James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 17. Actually, we'll start in verse 14. What doth the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give not those things which are needful to the body, what doth a prophet? What does a prophet saying? Oh, you need food and clothes, clothing. I'll pray for you. And you don't have works. You don't do anything. What doth a prophet? Verse 17. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. The devils are are believers according to modern churches today. Just believe, only believe. That's, That's not the faith, the righteousness which is of faith. Verse 20, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, for he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Faith with works is a man justified. Even as Boaz told Ruth, 
Jehovah reward thee for thy, for thy works, which was her faith. In James chapter 2, we already read those verses. Turn, turn back to Isaiah chapter 7, where we began. At the end of verse 9, Jehovah says, If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall, surely ye shall not be established. And what did Yeshua say? Turn to Matthew chapter 23 and we'll close with this. What did Yeshua say when he came to his own house? And when his own house received them not, what did Yeshua say unto them? Did Yeshua bless them and say, peace be on this house? This is what Yeshua says to any house or any person that rejects the gospel, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, the one sacrificed for all time, the blood of Christ which was shed, for the remission of sins. I, in, in the book of Matthew. Chapter 23. And we'll start in verse. We'll start in verse 34. Wherefore behold. I send you prophets and wise men. And scribes. And some of them ye shall kill and crucify. And some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues. And persecute them from city to city that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechai, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often I would have gathered thy children together even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of Jehovah. Alright, let's pray.